Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 says, And you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Verse 2 says, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Obviously we know he's talking about Satan. The course of this world, the way the system operates. Hi, my name is Charles Vance. I'm along with Chief Strategist Terry Saka. You're watching The Wealth Transfer. Terry, good to see you today. Hi Charles, how are you? Good, thank good. you. Wonderful. You? I love that scripture, so you, you, you get me right there. That is, I think the body of Christ and the failure, oh, by the way, welcome, as we said to the little transfer, <laughs> biblical principles, global economics, and protection and preservation for your family. We are on the Shemitah series, and the Shemitah series that we're referring to, uh, we're doing because it just so happens that the third and final warning Shemitah we're getting in America, 9-11-2008, the third one's next year, September, just so happens to be falling on the Feast or Tabernacle and the fourth and final red blood moon of Sukkot, which is dramatic, and I believe we better be prepared in the body of Christ, properly positioned so the enemy does not come to steal kill and destroy we I, the people's wealth. I'm going to put my hand in this uh, and I'm <laughs> going to say I'm going to make Terry, or not make him, but I'm going to have him explain the Shemitah and the blood moon in just a minute. <laughs> so those of you who are listening that don't know what he's talking about will bring you up to that. We've been talking yeah. about the last couple of weeks. By the way, people can watch these programs. They can go back and catch the uh, yes. former programs online at cornerstoneassetmetals.com. It's on the wealth transfer link up in the upper right. Uh, we have a library there so you can catch other programs in the past. Uh, we are getting more refined, so the last uh, maybe six months or so of the programs we're getting a lot better at. We're really getting right into the information so you can pass along to people who don't have satellite who may not see the program that this would be very helpful for them because we're really going to start driving into a lot of details and more and on that site you can catch these programs and the Shemitah series uh, we will have available um, on DVD now, as well. So that'd be nice. Shemitah is a seven year cycle yes. that you've been talking about the last three weeks that we see that's in the Bible that yes. has been established. Um, and there's some uh, extraordinary things that take place at the mm. conclusion of one and the beginning of another. Yeah, what we're finding is in the, in the Shemitah series uh, cycle is what we see is the first six years is known as an expansion period. It's when the crops are growing and if you're obedient to God, you're in blessings and and you're fruitful and you're multiplying. That's the six years of expansion. And when we look at these market cycle crashes that we originally started this program on, we realized that in those six years, our markets were expanding, meaning money was flowing, business was happening, stock prices were rising, things were taking place. But on the seventh year of a Shemitah cycle, it is either a fallout in consequence, destruction, or it is a resting and a blessing. Now, in the biblical mystery, the seventh year was supposed to be a year of rest. You rest the land, you forgive all debts, and you allow the poor into your land to feast off of whatever came up. If you didn't stay obedient to God, or you were not in obedience with all through the Bible, Charles, they, you could see where the Jewish people were not in obedience on that seventh year, going all the way back to Nebuchadnezzar when they were taken away to Babylon. Jeremiah was warning them about this. Destruction comes upon because a reckoning financially. Now, why is it financial? Because the, we, we, um, the debts forgiveness that was supposed to take place when the market system in America has been collapsing on these convenient seven-year cycles, it was the markets were taking away the wealth out of the people. It was the consequence for walking away from God. And as we go into today, we're going to go into the, the, three that, the two that lead up to today, which is 9-11 in 2000. And then, of course, 2008. Terry, you said there's also, in addition to a seven-year cycle, you said there's a seven-month cycle that, is known that as seems to be tishery. prevalent. Yeah, that is too, Charles. 
the, the month of Tishri in the Jewish calendar is a seven-month cycle. Now, we know God's pretty interesting on these seven numbers. It is, right? And so the seven-month cycle was following. And the, believe it or not, in 1987, as we left off, the, the uh, Black Monday was actually the two top Tisheries of the top five were on Black Monday and Black Tuesday. It's pretty amazing how the seven-month cycle falls right in line to the seven-year cycle. Now, here's what's even more impacting for what we're getting ready to see next year. Not only have we not repented since 9-11, 2008, a warning shot to the financial system. 2008 was the largest market collapse in percentage terms in the history of the United States. Did we heed that warning? No, not really. And the next one is due September of 2015, Shemitah cycle. Now, here's the thing. That one is in the fourth and final blood moon of Sukkot. So let's show image two, just to remind you real quick, the fourth and final blood moon of Sukkot, right there, is coming. You can take that off. This is a little quick one. No, That's no, a Feast of Tabernacles. What, what is that cycle, the blood moon cycle? That cycle is something that had to do with Israel. And in this series, we talked about the, some of the things that happened with Israel. Um, every time a four blood moon cycle comes into play. Now remember, blood moons are common. So many people go, oh yeah, I've seen a blood moon. Well, no, you probably haven't in a four blood moon cycle. If you notice there, it falls on Passover, which we all know is very important to the Jewish and the Christian people. And then it falls on the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, in, in September. And then the Bible says, as we went over last week, how the, the sun will be made dark. And then that's in the middle. That's a Nisan, which is a new year beginning. Now, next April, the third blood moon takes place, which is Passover. And then the fourth and final one, September 28, with the Shemitah. The blood moons have to do with Israel. We have Iran developing nuclear weapons, Syria on the verge of destruction. Something's coming in Israel's time frame here, it looks like. And at the same time, I think what's coming in the Middle East is going to impact the United States, the global economy. And if I really think, and I'll share this later on in the next week or two, I think it's going to impact the dollar's dominance as the tower of Babel's influence comes to an end. Terry, what, what if, e even if people looked at this and said, oh, the Shemitah, whatever. What? Uh, the, but I'm showing the, the evidence. I'm, I, and I'm aware of that. But what if they said, oh, I, don't, I don't think this cycle thing means anything. But still, we can still see the evidence, even if you take away all the numbers. That's right. The cycle number, you That's can right. still see evidence That's that right. there is wealth being transferred. Yes. And the reason it's taking place is because of the principle that, that you have outlined yes. the last three weeks that it's because simply people have turned their back on God. They've right. not followed the instruction that He's given them. That's right. And one instruction that God gives us is to manage the things that He created, the tangible, yes. the tangible creation in the earth and of the earth. We, are, as people of God, are required by God to manage it properly the, so that it will reproduce. And the problem, Charles, we have been putting our hard-earned wealth, mm -hmm. 401ks and IRAs, our currency that we're storing in the banking system. Now, all of this is the, um, under the auspice in the head of Lucifer, who is God of the world. So why are we putting our faith in that? But the problem is our IRAs, our 401ks are in that. We should be in God's money. If we have all along, we would be significantly wealthier today. That's a fact. It's the best performing, performing asset class in 10 years. So how do we protect and preserve our 401ks and IRAs? How do we go about making sure we're prepared for this next Shemitah colliding with the fourth blood moon as a, as a warning sign that the expansion and trillions of money printing we're doing is going to come to an end and it probably is going to hurt. Are we prepared? Here's one way we can do it. Cornerstone Asset Metals is here to help you protect and preserve what you have worked hard to gain. For those who have IRAs to protect, 401ks to preserve or cash in the bank, we would like to send you a package of information regarding the changes to the dollar and the challenges of our economy that you need to be prepared for. 
This package includes how easy it is to roll over your current IRA or 401k into a physical precious metals IRA for long-term protection of your hard-earned wealth. For those of you with cash to invest, we can arrange to have your precious metals stored in a private vault or simply send it to your home. Call or register now. Now, we left off where we were in the 1987, which was the Black Monday. It was pretty catastrophic for those that were in the market system. Many people remember the stock market crash of 1987. And, but they failed to tell you that that was a Shemitah year. And then we come seven years ahead. A lot of people actually don't realize that in 1994, we didn't really have a stock market crash per se. So, gee, that was unusual. Why did it skip 1994? And, every, you know, so it was this cycle stuff, you know. But 1994 did have a very dramatic consequence to it, but it was in the bond market. Now, the bond market, remember, is paper IOU debt. So I actually contend 1994 seven-year Shemitah timing was so interesting because it literally took out and put, I mean, catastrophic fear in those that were in the bond market, which is the debt market. Which it's, this and is, it's the debt market to the government, isn't it? The, the, the debt the, market the, to the, the government. It's IOUs from the government. That was the first major warning, in my opinion, that we must repent of our way and get back to God. The actual debt instrument of America was challenged. Now look at that image number eight, and you'll see what I mean by that. This was the bond market. Those rates, interest rates go, you see how it goes up? That's really bad for prices. As those interest rates spiked in the 90s like that, it made the bond prices collapse. So for those that were owning bonds, panicked because they were losing a tremendous amount of money. So that's the evidence of the bond cycle that happened on the Shemitah time of 1994. You can take that off. Now, why is that important? A lot of people rethink that the 1990s were skipped. And I contend with that bond being true government debt, it was not. And so there was a big panic in that. And that was our first real warning. And then we come up to the next seven years, 2001, right? Now, don't we all know what happened in 2001? This was the one. I believe 94 was the warning shot across the bow to the American government get lined up with God. To a lot of people and the average people, we didn't really see or feel the pain in the 90s, but those that are in the bonds, the debt of the government, they did feel the pain. So that didn't work conveniently. And now this is where it gets really tight. Conveniently in the cycle of the Shemitah, down to the Elul 29, the very day and the very hour comes the market crash of 2000. What happened in, in that period of 2001? We had the 9-11. Tragic, tragic event in American history. That was the beginning of the perfect timing events of the Shemitah warning. But what people don't understand, Tower of Babel was when man built without God. I don't need you, Father. The Twin Towers were the tallest buildings in the world. We are American superiority. We don't need God. The Twin Towers were the financial district buildings. And they got taken down. Tower of Babel, Twin Towers, ego, we don't need God. What do we do? We double down and say we will rebuild exactly what the Israeli Jews did back in the day when the temple gets destroyed. Look at image number nine. This is, now we all know this, but look at image number nine. That right there is a cycle that comes out and shows you 2,000, to 2001, the gray area is the massive recession that came upon us. But look at that collapse in that box. The beginning of that Shemitah was in the 2000, September, 
to 2001. Remember, the Shemitah is a year long. That collapse is the uh, evidence of the expansion that took place from the mid-90s leading up to that point. During the Shemitah consequence, because not only did we not go back to God, we were uh, um, arrogant towards God. He goes, at, we go, the enemy, however the consequence comes upon us, our two largest towers of Babel get taken down. Look at that market crash. Now, you could take that off. Do you feel America respects God? Now, individually we do, but as a nation, as a government, do you feel we respect God? Are we putting him first? Are we honoring him in our edict, in our policies, in our choices? Have Jerry, we repented of our wicked ways, Charles? Now, the, listen to this. Oh, no, ask that, and then I want to point this, because this well, is what amazes the, me. The way that we can stay independent of what's taking place among the masses yes. is for us to get our heart right with God. Absolutely. Well, start the, there for sure, yeah, right? And yes. start the and, and follow influence the instruction others. that He has given us. Yeah. Certainly influence others. I mean, that's our responsibility uh, to carry this message to everyone that we come into contact with. Yes. But we're very people have just tried to dissolve personal responsibility in their relationship with God, and I you am cannot you. do it. Yes. We have to be personally responsible to Him to be good managers, mm -hmm. and, and you know, we could repeat this I don't know how many times, and, know. and it is up to the listener to get this. We, I can't screw the top of your head off, dump it in, <laughs> and, and put your head back on, uh, or your heart. I can't right. cut a hole open and put, pump it in your heart. You have to get this and realize that God wants to be first in your life. Jesus yes. said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things shall be added. And the things He was talking about that would be added was tangible things. It was food, clothing, and drink. He said he would, and he said it's the thing that the heathens, pagans, people without God, were mm -hmm. seeking after. But he said, if you'll put me first, put my principles first, yes. put my laws first, right. follow my instruction yes. first, seek God's way of doing things. That's what the kingdom means God's way of doing things yes. instead of man's way of doing yes. things. I'll give you everything they're trying to get. But we didn't. We, and we, we didn't, walked away. Not in general, we definitely didn't. No, I'm did talking not. government yeah, now. I understand. And, and that's where 9 11 comes upon us. 94 was the shot across the bow. 9 11 was the precise Shemitah. Now, when I'm speaking Shemitah and Tishri and Elul 29, you want to do more research on your own. Read up on that. But 98% accuracy to the ancient calendar of this Shemitah mystery on the 9 11 collapse. Now, when we ask that, Charles is right on. We were supposed to put God first. Repent, he says. Our two largest towers of man-made Babel collapses at 9-11. We go to church for a month. What happens after that? Let me ask you this. How's our social behavior in America today? It's worse. Worse. I'll, I'll respond. Look at the banking system today. It's worse. Low support of Israel I've ever seen. It's worse. We are yes. really sticking it to Israel. Moral compass in America today. Horrible. Family unity. Horrible. Children who behave. Horrible. Now. Why this is important. <laughs> Hold on. Why this is important. Because our, the next one that's coming, the cycle, is not only lining up with the four blood moons, the Shemitah. This financial expansion of trillions we've done is so extraordinary. Your IRA, your 401k is in direct crosshairs. You just crawled back from 2008. And the explosive expansion we've had in money printing these six years have led to what's coming next September of 2015. And we need to be in the body of Christ properly positioned with our assets if we want the wealth transfer to come to us and not away from us. The question is, how do we do that? And here's some of the answers. Cornerstone Asset Metals is here to help you protect and preserve what you have worked hard to gain. For those who have IRAs to protect, 401ks to preserve, or cash in the bank, we would like to send you a package of information regarding the changes to the dollar and the challenges of our economy that you need to be prepared for. 
This package includes how easy it is to roll over your current IRA or 401k into a physical precious metals IRA for long-term protection of your hard-earned wealth. For those of you with cash to invest, we can arrange to have your precious metals stored in a private vault or simply send it to your home. Call or register mm. now. Now, I know I talked about 9-11 there as, as at the end of like the five collapses we had, but we, we, we started out the series here in the Shemitah to outline the three most recent collapses or three biggest collapses that we've had, most important ones. And the first one, of course, which we all know is the Great Depression. Now, just so happens, yes, the Great Depression was a Shemitah year. We had the roaring 20s, right? Ping were expanding. Remember the Roaring Twenties? We came out of World War I, explosive money expansion and economic growth. You had the clappers and the dancers, and they were really just having a good old time in the Twenties. The expansion period of the six years of blessing. Now you're saying expansion. It's because there was so much currency put into the because system. Because of the war, so much yeah. currency put in the system. Now everybody was, was having a good time. Now here's what they didn't know, and this is why we're doing this series. Right before the Great Depression, everybody thought everything was great. Now, mind you, in the Great Depression, we lost 86% of our market was wiped out. It was devastating. Now, I don't have to get too deep into the Great Depression because it's pretty self-explanatory, right? But we want to know that it was the second greatest percentage crash in history known as Black Monday, 1929, rolls right into Black Tuesday, 1929. And that just so happened to be Tishery 24 and 25. And look at image 10, because we know what this means. This was right before <laughs> the crash of 1929. Look it up in the corner, 1929. Bye, 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 experts advise. Woo, we experts are having a great advise. time. <laughs> That's a surprise, right? Yeah. Okay, now you can take that off, but why is that important? What the world and the market is telling you is almost never honest and truthful because Lucifer is in discovery. Now, in the Great Depression, right before, everyone was having a great time, and they were telling you to do that. Those who did got so wiped out, we had mass suicides, people jumping out of buildings, people starving, children starving. It was devastating. Go to... Image 11, for instance, and this is in the Great Depression, mind you. Look at that crash, September 3rd, 1929. Then you had Black Thursday, Black Tuesday. Look at these collapses coming. Straight, the market literally just got wiped out. Who saw that coming? You could take that off. It, it, that hurts me to look at. But here's the important thing. We don't have to see that coming because that is the systems of the world, not where God had you. Now, mind you, if you had been in an asset of God at the time, and I know there was different rules and laws and things, but there was still a way that you could have been properly positioned to not have gone through such pain. And that was very dramatic in market crash history. It's the biggest market crash we had impact mm. to the people but I think you're going to find when we get to current time how we're experiencing a Great Depression, but we're not in food lines. We're getting welfare in, in food stamps. So go to image 12. We're doing it. This is what happened the next day. Wall Street crashes. Black Thursday in America, absolutely emotionally devastating. And this is the London Herald town because this went through the whole world, mind you. Now, let's do 13. And this was the result of that Wall Street crash. This isn't a joke. This was all over the country. Our children were starving. People were out of work. Now let's wrap up with image 14. Lines for employment devastated our nation. You could take that off. That was a Shemitah year. We had come off the truest standard of money. The Federal Reserve was created in 1913. We went to war in 1917. We expanded the false pretenses of economic growth in the 20s, and we got warned heavily and took a serious consequence for the Great Depression because man became in charge 
of decisions and money and policies instead of, as Charles alludes to a lot, we were kings and priests. We forgot our priestly duties and walked away from God. We've got, we've got to keep both of them. We've got to realize that we have a relationship with God that has to be kept in proper order. Yes. We have to follow God's instruction. God, I, I don't know how many times I feel like I need to remind people this. God doesn't give us instruction to harm us. He gives us instruction. The book of Isaiah says so that He can make us profit. Yes. So that That's He can exactly lead us right. the ways that we should go. These consequences are not God's doing. That's no. our disobedience. It's our disobedience. And the, just ah. and, and God has set laws of seed time and harvest yes. in place, and we will either have consequences or rewards for the things that we choose to do. Yes. We need to be a people that are so focused on following God's instruction instead of following the course of this world. See, it's easy to get sucked into this. You had that newspaper article that said, buy, buy, buy. Amazing, uh, isn't it? Guess who's telling you to buy, buy, buy? The people that are printing this stuff because they want you to use more, more, and more because it's a debt-based system. What are they trying to do right now? Well, they're doing the same thing. Yes, trying and to get you to go And they've done it for years. You know, uh, George Bush uh, uh, era even, they, uh, yep, they had they put did. money in the system, told you, go spend it. We're going to send you extra money back. Just to spend, spend it. it. Spend right. it. Make sure you spend it. That's it's right. got to keep circulating because it's fake. And mm -hmm. if it doesn't keep circulating, then somebody stops the movement of it. Yes. Then it stops the economy from working. Yes. You don't have to do that when you invest in real stuff. Tangible assets, Tangible Charles. Tangible assets. God's money. We're running out now, of Now remember, yeah. God's money. So we talked about the Great Depression. Next week we'll get into the next two, 9-11, 2000, and 2008, be closer to us. And then we'll start to preview what we can do about it currently. Get protected. Ask Jesus into your heart. He'll come and set you free. God bless you tonight. You need to tell somebody about the broadcast. We're on at the same time on this station, this network, every week. Uh, it, just encourage somebody to watch the program. If they don't have this station or network, they can watch these programs on demand 24-7, cornerstoneassetmetals.com. Terry and I will be back again next week, same place and same time. Join us right here for the Wealth Transfer. Cornerstone Asset Metals is here to help you protect and preserve what you have worked hard to gain. For those who have IRAs to protect, 401ks to preserve, or cash in the bank, we would like to send you a package of information regarding the changes to the dollar and the challenges of our economy that you need to be prepared for. This package includes how easy it is to roll over your current IRA or 401k into a physical precious metals IRA for long-term protection of your hard-earned wealth. For those of you with cash to invest, we can arrange to have your precious metals stored in a private vault or simply send it to your home. Call or register now. Check, 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 test, test. When check. you were leaning forward. Check, test, there one, two. Huh. Back.